You know, technology has made the whole business of ship design so much simpler. Organizing space, for example, just drag things where you want them. Ah, well, maybe there's a bit more to this. Welcome to Alert. For those of you familiar with this series of programs, you'll know that Alert is concerned with the human element, a critical but often overlooked feature of all aspects of ship or system design and operation. So in any ship design, the prime focus has to be on the people who will have to use it. And here, of course, we're talking about the seafarers. So how do we get a design which focuses on making ships and its systems usable? Well, through a process called human-centered design, or HCD. HCD is the process of applying human factors and ergonomics knowledge and techniques to minimize human error. It's worth mentioning that around 80% of all accidents at sea are attributable to human or operator error and one of the contributing factors is poor ship design. So human-centered design must enhance effectiveness and efficiency, improve working conditions, and avoid any effects of use on the health, safety, and performance of the mariner. Such a design, a good design, can only be achieved if a naval architect is a well-rounded engineer, someone on the lookout for innovative and inspirational design. Someone with an experienced feel for structural strength, durability, and safety someone with an understanding of the ways of the sea and above all, the needs of the user. A good design is also a design that exceeds the owner's expectations. At the very least, it'll meet the owner's specification, be safe to operate and provide comfort for crew and passengers. It'll meet environmental regulations and comply with the relevant regulations of class as well as national and international authorities. The question is how? How do we build a ship that's environmentally friendly, cheap, safe, comfortable, easy to maintain and easy to operate? Well, rules, regulations and recommendations issued by the IMO, the ILO and classification societies help to a certain extent, but they don't in themselves solve the problem. What we need most of all is the professional knowledge and skill of the designers and builders. That's absolutely crucial if we want to end up with ships that are usable. And most of the time this is about paying attention to the simplest of things, making sure that surfaces, ladders and stairways don't create slip, trip and fall hazards, making sure that lighting is sufficient and that vibration and noise are eliminated or reduced to a minimum and that crew accommodation is sensibly laid out. And all of this should be addressed at the design stage. So it seems that we're talking about simple common sense. And something else that makes sense when we're designing a ship is consulting with the people who are living and working on it. How useful and effective this consultation will be will depend on the strength of the professional relationship between sea staff and staff ashore. Getting first-hand comment and criticism from those seafarers with a tangible interest in the project is another vital component of the design process. Reviews of current vessels, especially the most recent, should be carried out to identify the good things and ways to build on them. At the same time, mistakes or oversights in previous designs should be identified and then eliminated. As we said at the beginning, poor ship design is a major contributor to accidents at sea. It's important then to get the design right, and that means giving due consideration to the human element, making sure that the ship is usable. And at every stage of the design process, consulting with the people who will have to use it. That's all for this programme. For more information, read the complete issue on the website. See you again soon.